Hello people, and welcome back to part 24 of the Noob's Guide to City Skylines. Hope you're having a wonderful day. And welcome back, I hope everyone is well. It's nice to be back in the Noob's Guide City. Uh, well, last week we worked on this cute little sort of dual one-way system um, tram integration for a main street as a replacement for a regular four or six lane road. Uh, I'm really happy with how it's turned out. It came out really nice, didn't it? Some nice layers of height in there as well. And of course, as always, uh, the careful zoning and placement of specific assets in order to factor in uh, to the overall build. So really happy with it and you guys really enjoyed it as well. So thank you for all the support on that video. However, today we are tackling another Industries DLC build. Uh, we are going to be working on the Noob's Guide Mountain Ore Quarry. Uh, really fun and interesting builds, these one. Uh, kind of similar to the ore refineries, they can get ugly very quickly. And in my opinion, they require a certain aesthetic in order for them to be brought to life a little bit more. These are very much sort of under the umbrella of themed builds. Uh, like the ore refinery was, uh, the ore quarry is also, you know, has to have special care and attention paid towards it in order to get it to look right. So we're going to spread the mountain ore quarry across the mountain today, several ore pockets that can be exploited. Uh, get a unique factory in here as well, alongside a little local suburb so we can keep uh, the worker demands coming in. And of course, lots of detail in between the current existing city and the new one, which is always satisfying to see it blend together. So let's build the Noob's Guide's ore quarry, shall we? So we'll be naming uh, the ore quarry after one of our wonderful Patreon subscribers today. Thank you so much for all your support, Muddy. I uh, really appreciate it, buddy. During the oil refinery build uh, that we mentioned earlier, uh, we actually did set up a very small ore quarry. And in order to produce metals for the petroleum refinery, you need a uh, factory to operate. So because of that, the area has actually been running for a while and we're already over the resource cap for level five. So all we've got to do today is hit the work account, which is fine. We have a nice balance of RCI. And uh, we're going to be doing uh, some road network stuff here today as well. But what we'd like to do first of all is uh, find an established position uh, for the mountain or quarry build, the main building to sit out of. So let's bring a road down here, again, just as an initial frame. Then we're going to break all this today. We're going to time lapse up some suburban road network stuff here in a second as well, because we will be having sort of a or industry suburb, if we like, okay? So I think what we'll do is just to help distribute traffic because we are playing with industrial traffic here, is just bring in a little five deep roundabout, okay? We know that roundabouts at this point now uh, can be fairly useful in certain scenarios, uh, especially when we're relatively far from a highway at this point in the city. Eventually, we will be able to feed it through uh, into here and just sort of let them come straight up. But for the time being, they will have to either come down this way or back into the start of the city uh, over the interchange this side. But that's only temporary, of course. And we might also bring cargo rail over today as well. Um, it would be nice if we had this tile to bring through another cargo line. So I might just prepare a very inappropriate one and then just amend it once we pop at the next tile in a few thousand populations time. But wonderful. That's going to give me a roundabout. So I know that this terrain over this side is extremely uneven. So we're going to give it a little bit of level. Okay, and then we'll probably time lapse by road network here in a second as well. Just so we have some sort of population centre for the ore quarry. Let's go ahead and work on that unique building. So I think we're going to be using some of the asymmetrical roads. Uh, I think these came with mass transit, didn't they? I think they did. Yeah, mass transit roads. And it's going to be a nice time to use them here. So I'm going to come off of this one. I'm going to bring in a slight curve. And then back to a road guideline with a curve tool. And then just a nice little gentle bend into there. And then we'll make all this asymmetrical for right now until we know where everyone's going to sit. Let's then also grab a regular. Uh, let's go for a tree road, right? Something a little bit fancier. Something where we can decorate. There we go. And then what I'd like to do here with the main building is to have it slightly uh, on an angle. So we're going to draw out some initial frames to allow this to happen. Let's come out by this one. And then let's go for this one here. There we go, that's going to be perfectly aligned, isn't it? I'm going to be happy with that, I think. That should be good for me. Let's go for slightly deeper. And then we'll bring in a dirt road frame. Let's go for a nice 45 degrees snap there. We can remove this now. And we'll probably just need to paint this industry area out. Yes, we will. So with the ore quarry, we have uh, some really large pockets of ore um, all over the mountain. So I think we're going to spread this out a little bit. We're not going to use every single spot of it because we just don't need that much uh, oil production. But there's certainly some nice things we can do, especially along here with the sort of bucket excavator vibes that we've seen before, right? 
Should be quite a fun build today. It's been a while since I've done an ore quarry on the channel. Um, not since Novaria now. I think that's quite nice, isn't it? You know, just popping it on an angle, and then let's already have a discussion about uh, the detailing that I'm eyeing up for this area. So I'm just thinking if we come on with no snapping, and then let's bring in a little bit of freeform with uh, some old battered nature reserve fence. Okay, just a little bit of fractured vibes. Let's go into our overgrowth and grab uh, some extreme tufty boys, some of the high vegetation number four, perhaps. And number three would also be welcome as well. And then I don't think that a couple of uh, coconut trees throughout this space as well, perhaps uh, some smaller numbers in there, but quite simple, all right? It's going to give us a really nice point of decoration directly outside of the main building, and then just allow this corner to sort of sit a little bit nicer. In terms of the orientation of the asymmetricals, uh, we do want the uh, two lanes facing into uh, the main junctions. So we'll have this one out this way as well, and then this will become probably something else as we uh, move down into this side of the quarry today. There we go, that's what we want. Cool, so let's time lapse up a little road network here for the suburban frames, and then we can start placing down our first old quarry asset as well. some really basic uh, suburban frames that can just be used to house uh, residential as and when it, we need it and when it comes in. Weirdly enough, this district has also named itself Coleridge Hills, which I realise coal is spelt slightly differently. But kind of weird, right? <laughs> that run a ridge where there's coal and there's hills. A little bit weird. The city is potentially psychic. And we've also gone for European suburbia theme as well, just because it's a little more rural looking and sort of more the vibe I'm after uh, for what's going to happen. Uh, with this little mining town that's tethered onto the side of the quarry today. So, let's actually start the ore quarry, shall we? I'm going to come with an industrial road first, and I want to see where our resource pocket is. So we've got an enormous deposit here, first of all. So this will be sort of where we stop first, a couple of little ore pits, and then we can climb around in some bigger sort of bucket excavators around this side over here. First asset I would like to include, which you actually unlock at a level 2 ore area, which thankfully we have uh, already, is the industrial steel plant. Okay, so this one is a behemoth, absolute monster of a building. And again, as always, care and attention has to be paid as to how this sits within the build. So it's a little bit of terraforming around it. I'm going to bring in a touch of level terrain. Now, of course, any terrain work will always look horrendous before it starts to look good in cities, all right? We're used to this by now. So let's bring in a little uh, industrial road frame directly behind the back of it. We're going to grab the building, and then I want it on the other orientation, so I'm going to put it here instead. This just opens those cargo courtyards out onto this side of the build. Sort of respects an internal crawling height, if you like. But uh, I definitely prefer it on this orientation. And it's also going to serve as quite a nice entry point into the build, isn't it? You know, got all these little sort of nuances of detail along this side of the asset, so I'm very happy with that to sit here. And then let's just amend this frame now to wrap around it. There we go. That's going to be nice for me. Now, we also did prepare a road connection over this side during one of our detailing live streams, so I want to factor this in as well. Let's go ahead and right-click that top slope, and then we're just going to slope this out so it's nice and smooth for the road to come up. That should be good enough for me. And then we'll come off our road guideline and then do some nice freeform stuff. Back to a straight piece. There we go, and then let's bring this one out. And that should just be... A simple connection with the road guideline now on a curve tool. Wonderful. So again, it's more interconnectivity for uh, the industrial area, which is going to help. So of course, this is a unique factory. Uh, it's going to want some warehouses next to it. So I'm going to use small warehouses, which are slightly loud. So we have to be careful of the noise pollution. I think I'm going to mix and match in a couple of smalls um, with the warehouse yards. 
yeah, I think I'm feeling that. And what we'll do is we'll also grab um, a healthy dose of Noob's Guide Forest in a second as well. And then just border them off. So we're going to get all these to stub metal. Which will continually keep the industrial steel plant fed, which is exactly what we want. So metal there as well. I'd also like to bring in a little bit of, sort of detail around uh, the side of the main building, if at all possible. So let's come in with a pathway here, hopefully. There we go. And then we'll come directly behind to about this point. This should be good. And then we'll cut straight the way across here. And then probably a connection into there as well. And I think little stretches of uh, or industry fence, which is actually one of the better looking fences. And we've got the perfect excuse to use as much of it as we want today. So we'll definitely be doing this. So let's come off of the road guideline here too. So I just want to keep this fence really tightly hooked into the pathway. And then why don't we switch down here? Why not a little bit of battered old nature reserve? And then lots of news guide forest. Okay, let's get it everywhere. Really shelter the suburb from the noise pollution. Of course, we know that our trees actually work as noise pollution, sort of sheltering now. So we should be okay here. And then where it is a little bit exposed, we can just not zone up too much here. Okay, so sort of make sure we don't zone in these spaces. Perhaps some parks or detailing uh, would work to transition away there. But what I am an enormous fan of in this sort of view here is the sort of peak of warehouses in the foreground of the industrial steel plant. It, again, it's respecting that internal sort of crawling height, isn't it? No crawling heights don't just account to skylines. It can be sort of a little nuance you can bring into other builds like this. It really does help. Very nice. I'm happy with that. That's be a neat factory in. So because this ore quarry has been ticking over for a few episodes now, uh, I just need to hit 350 workers uh, to get it to level 3. So let's start giving uh, some worker spaces, shall we? So, come back into level terrain. So, we're going to be doing a lot of terraforming with the resources view on today. And also with the uh, terrain as well, because I need to sell some soil. There we go. So, yeah, we really just want to prioritize the spaces where the ore pockets actually sit. Because, of course, this is what's actually going to produce us ore. And then as we come over to the other side of the quarry, uh, we will start to slope up the mountain. But for right now, let's focus on what's going to happen here. So let's see what we have to play with in the ore area so far. Uh, we do have a couple of small underground mines, but I think I'm feeling just the regular small ore mines for this first little introductory bit into the quarry. So I'm going to come into our uh, shift terrain with a slightly lower intensity and a smaller brush. I just want to start sinking down until we can just see a little bit of the brown cliff face begin to expose itself. Okay, so terraforming is like really, really helpful with these ore quarry areas. Probably more so than any other industry area. You can just place them on flat land if you want, or place them on very uneven terrain. But you'll certainly notice a difference in the quality of the build come the end. So it's, it's up to you really how much you want to respect the topography, if that's something you care about. But, you know, everyone's opinion is going to be different, isn't it? Okay, wonderful. So I also know I'm going to want a lot more land here. So I'm going to scoop out an enormous chunk of the mountain, right? Don't worry about it. It's okay. It's all right. <laughs> and there was people that aren't enormous lovers of terraforming like this, but believe me, it will make a difference come the end. Let's snap into the grid now. Uh, we don't really need the road guideline here. And then we're going to give ourselves a little sort of base frame here. We'll have two in like this. And then what I would also like to do in this area is bring in a very small amount of American two-lane truss bridge, because this looks really cool uh, with the ore quarries. So we're going to come up uh, to our lowest elevation step, and then we're just going to draw out uh, actually off of the road that holds the uh, industrial steel plant. And then we're going to come up by three, so we'll do one, two, and three. And then we want to go out on the road length by 11 or 12, I think, isn't it? Yes, 12. And then come back down to earth on that one. Okay, and this should allow us now to squeeze our uh, dirt road under. No, we're just ever so slightly a little bit too... Uh, shallow, so let's go down a couple more indentations, and that should now allow us to clear it. Yes, there we go, fantastic. So we'll bring that under, and we'll worry about that connection at a later date. But what I would also like to do is again the very uh, specific placement of the dirt roads around the edge, and bring them on just little gentle curvatures, 
as they come around the back of these small ore quarries. And what this will do is just wrap the ore quarry in kind of the vanilla gravel texture, which just helps to expand it out a little bit rather than it just immediately ending and returning back to grass. It just has a little bit of a bleed zone now, doesn't it? Okay, sort of rounds off those sharp corners. So all we're doing here is bringing in the vanilla gravel road just to the edge. And then with a small curve, we're just wrapping it around the back. And then there we go. Okay. So super cute, super little simple design for some of the smaller ore buildings. Okay. Equally as much it would work with the underground mines if you wanted to do that as well. It's all your own personal preference, of course. Okay. But what that is going to do is just give us a nice little bit of depth, isn't it? Uh, a touch of layer, if you like. Let's come in now with some high vegetation again. We're going to be using a lot of high vegetation today. It's, uh, it's going to be sort of a theme. Okay, so I'm thinking maybe some of the smaller ones. Actually, that's a little bit too dense. There we go. Yeah, so lots of overgrowth around the edge. Okay, very much like we did with the green tree spam uh, over in the hillside suburb. We're going to be doing uh, a little bit of high vegetation spam in the ore quarry. Okay, again, it looks a little bit weird right now, but just, just give it time. Give it a little bit of time. Let's come on to our nature reserve fence again. And then just little stretches of this now around the edge. As though it is kind of some redundant safety barrier, you know, it's sort of not really fit for purpose, but it's there anyway. And you can take that as a spice sample, can't you? A few industrial buildings down in the bottom of the pit. A little bit of ore fence in here as well. I'm gonna be happy with it. It's gonna be uh, it's gonna be quite nice. So of course, continually playing with layers, we want to make sure that yeah, we've got probably enough ore production down here. Now two small mines should be enough to feed at the first buildings that we want to place, which is really just going to be the ore grinding mill. But before we do that, I would actually like to uh, terraform out the mountain, which is going to be a big job. So let's come into our slope terrain tool with a medium brush and the highest intensity. And what I would like to start doing now is picking out a height layer, probably about here, I think. And then I want to start sloping up to that now. I just want to pick out some slight grooves within the mountain. Something that can hold a road and also be detailed relatively easily as well. So of course, it's very obviously cut away, isn't it, right now? But, you know, don't worry about it. We will we will tend to it. We will make it blend, make it fit. Okay, that's going to be not too bad for me right now, I feel. I think I'm going to be mostly happy with this general aesthetic. Let's now bring in uh, some more industry road, and we're going to come on again with our topography view. And then we can probably just align this one up here now. That's going to give us a nice little sort of border frame around this, isn't it? Let's also have a look at some storage as well uh, to help keep the ore grinding mill fed. Yes, I think it is. I think I'm okay with that. But again, considering orientation, designs, etc., I think I actually would prefer this to sit with its back against the lower mines, okay? That's going to allow the connection into there. We can remove this frame now. And then bring in one. And hopefully, t I can't deny that, right? If it fits, we sit. Yes, please. There we go. Okay, so consider placements of the smaller assets, the orientations, how they sit against current infrastructure. It all helps, okay? And then we can, might be able to squeeze in a small mine here, actually, if we wanted to. Just, just do one small underground one. I don't see why not. I think that's okay, right? Actually, it looks like a little bit of sort of a main entrance admin bit for... Uh, the small sort of on, like, on ground ore mines anyway. Not bad, but it's uneven, isn't it? You know, it's a little bit nasty. You know, ore quarries by their very nature are uneven and unnatural, I guess. So I'm happy for those vibes to be brought into the build as well. So what I'll do now is just bring in this dirt road that's going to crawl up the mountain. Lots of nice freeform curves here. Try and make it a little bit wavy as well, not totally straight and even. And then we can have this road that now ascends up there. We might want to do a little bit more terraforming here. If not, uh, what will work nicely will actually be a little bit of the um, sort of exposed uh, rock decals in this space uh, for wherever we can fit them. Especially the first one. Uh, was it this one, isn't it? Yes, yeah, the one on the side that we can do. Make sure we spin it around every now and again so it's not got a perfect sort of mirroring from the one that it's next to. So we can do this if we like, some exposed stone that's on the side of the cliff face. And that's going to be quite fun, I think. And of course, we do actually want to just get rid of the vanilla trees here, because we will be doing our own tree detailing later. 
But what we're seeing now, when we sort of look back, is we can definitely see the road that chisels its way up the mountain, can't we? That's a really cool aesthetic. I'm super happy with that. So, yeah, that should be quite fun. So, let's just let time play a little bit. Uh, that should be enough now, really. Uh, let's go for one more building with the ore grinding mill, if we can. Uh, let's see where we might want to put this in. Up here might actually be uh, quite a good shout. So, why don't we factor in the connection into the ore mines themselves here. Let's come on to a road guideline. There we go. And then we can use this new layer that has now made itself known uh, to actually grab something for the ore grinding mill to sit on. And I think we're just going to amend the terrain here, right? Because that's going to be a little bit more sensible, isn't it? There we go. And now we can just carve out the uh, new terrain layer against the new road network, which is going to allow everyone to sit in and make some friends. And I think everyone's going to be happy with this general configuration. Possibly holding frame out here. Actually, maybe even down into the old quarry from this point. It's also another connection for them to get back into. And then, again, push it out as the area grows out. So, of course, you don't need your processing buildings in an old pocket. So, you don't need to worry too much about that. Okay, so that gives us all the processing we need. Now, we have all storage, which can help feed at the ore grinding mill. And eventually, we can switch this out for the larger one as well. But just a little small sort of operating pit for the opening of the quarry here. Nothing major. And then as people expand around the facility, uh, indeed, over where we get the bucket excavators over this side, and then perhaps uh, a touch of admin on top of the hill over this way as well. And what we can do, again, to respect that vibe is perhaps bring out another little mountain dirt road uh, that's going to follow the terrain um, up this mountain ridge this time instead. Okay, so we'll keep it winding up to the top. And of course, lots of really cool detailing to be had on this road here today as well. Lots of rocks. Very fun. So we can link that up on the ridge as well. And then obviously feed these off into different areas of the facility now. So it should be quite an expansive ore mine today. So we're going to let some uh, residential grow up. We're going to throw down some schools and some parks. And uh, all our usual sort of fun uh, bits and pieces that we love for City Skylines. Let's also do like a little sort of commercial area. Let's uh, remove some residential We'll throw down some commercial spaces and then we can move back into residential on this side as well so this should hopefully make people grow yes there we go so we get power sync through and then really it's just waiting for the workers to take over now so i have as just realized that before we hit level three and um, we haven't talked about this in the industries dlc yet and um, if you find yourself sort of very slowly ticking over towards the next level and it's just taking a long time and sometimes it might drop a little bit and it's not quite growing the way you would like there's a little trick slash exploit we can do with the interest DLC. If we spam down a production building, then it kind of spikes the work account unorganically. So I'll kind of show you what I mean here, right? So you can see that the Muddy Da Vinci quarry here is slowly ticking over over time. We're nearly 100 away from the work account now to get to level 3. If we just come in and spam down, say, a lot of uh, small or buying quarries that hold 35 people, of course, these aren't permanent fixtures because this would look horrendous just spamming uh, all quarries down like this, or the, the mines at least. Okay, to find a place, the, the terrain will have to be friendly towards it. Okay, so just spam down lots of them. Obviously, it looks awful. But what it will do is kind of artificially spike the work account for you um, quite quickly. So if you're looking for that little kind of final kick up the arse to get over the level, you can see how quickly it's increasing now. Uh, with those new ore mines place it works the same with farming you just have to place fields um with the oil area you just have to place the oil derricks but it helps it helps you just sort of get over that final little threshold and then of course once you've got that level you can just delete them so if you find yourself struggling it's a nice useful little trick just spam some extraction buildings and then you'll be fine so we'll be back at level three and there we have a level 3 ore area, which gives us the rotary kiln plant, the electronics factory, which we won't be using today. Of course, we won't be using the seabed mining vessel either, because we have no sea here. And then we have the medium ore mine, which is one of the better looking ones, because it has sort of the animated crane within it, which is quite nice. Alright, so let's come into our resource view. And then let's go ahead and find another little uh, deposit of ore that we might want to uh, work with here today. So we've got 
this main one here that we filled out, I'd like to save this chunk over here for the sort of bucket teeth excavator things, the huge drills. And then maybe up here now where we've spammed down some resource production. Uh, we can just make a small little area, okay? So not everything's kind of massively flowing. The area is a little bit spread out. So let's get rid of these. Okay, of course it'll drop our work account again, but if we need that little boost uh, just to get back up to level four, then we can just spam the resource extraction buildings again. So let's bring a little dirt road frame out here. Now we are within an ore pocket here, I'm sure. Yes, we are. Fantastic. Let's come in and we're going to grab ourselves. So the rotary kiln plant is going to produce metal. This is the the big boy version of the ore grinding mill, but it's just, it might perhaps be a little bit too big for me, this thing. And it's it's loud and it's pollusive and it's huge. <laughs> it's just, it, it is a good building, but it's probably not the vibe I want for this sort of ore quarry. And I, I'll, I'll leave a few of the other ore quarries linked down below today as well, because we've done various different sort of shapes and designs and styles of these things now. So let's place this in here. Obviously, we need to terraform that because that looks nearly illegal. Let's sell some of our soil. Of course, take out big chunks, and then what we can do is just soften around it with a larger brush size here as well. Let's make it seem a little bit more natural, a little bit more organic, right? Cool. So we can probably afford another one up at the top here as well. So we'll come back onto road length. We'll draw a border around the back here. We'll also prepare our terrain. Uh, to hold a few more of these little animated crane ones, because they are they are quite fun, aren't they? When their assets are animated like this. So we can have some nice cranes here now that are going to sit on top of the mountain. Okay, really cool. But I've actually just noticed that they don't animate when you're far away from them. I've never noticed that before. Yeah, they do have a render distance, don't they? Interesting. Either way, we can have this up here. So what I would also like to do is to paint up a regular district over the ore area. We've done this before uh, with our oil fields. So just a regular vanilla district, okay? Not an industry area. And then we're going to give this the ore specialization from the base game. And then what we can do with this is just zone in some generic zoned commercial. Not commercial, industrial. And let's just bring in some initial frames, sort of general stuff here. And then let's go for some large batches, and then we'll pick out some small shapes. And then we'll just let some vanilla ore be part of the industry's DLC ore. And it really helps decorate, you know? Exactly the same process we did with our forestry area. You know, all these sort of same lessons and rules that we've learned over this series now still apply. So, you know, we've got our bulk forestry assets in here. But then further behind, we have some of the zonable vanilla stuff, you know? And it works. It's absolutely fine. It can be detailed and factored into the build, and it just blends so nicely. And it's just a nice way of decorating an industry area, because we don't really get that many sort of industry-themed props um, with the industry DLC, which is a little bit of a shame. But we can pretend uh, with the regular zone stuff. Okay, and then why don't we just kind of round off this little micro-facility up here that's sat by itself on the mountain? Why don't we give it a or a worker's barracks? Almost as though it's like some sort of point of call, a little bit of admin for this high up. Something where the sort of big cranes can operate out from. So it's really cute. It's really simple. And again, any existing road frames now we can just bring in and around the back of the build. Possibly squeeze one through here as well. Yeah, I think what we'll probably do here actually is begin to uh, create a new slope in order for us to... Uh, eventually prepare for the big teeth drills. So we'll get a nice slope up this side. Okay, back to this into the area as well. Now let's come back onto our resources here. So yeah, we're going to grab the level terrain at this point. Just clear out a nice space for us around the back here. Yeah, bring it all the way through this side. And then what we'll do is grab slope terrain. Grab the height at the top where we want to meet with this road. And then from this point now, we can just come on with the large brush size. And I'm just going to slope up the back of the mountain with the left click all the way up to the top. And that's just going to give us a nice little gully for our road to sit on. Whilst also still 
maintaining the shape and the curvature of the mountain. Of course, it's extremely obviously terraformed right now. Uh, but as always, it will get better. So we can bring out another one here. Let's allow this to come down this side. Let's actually give it a little bit more breathing room than that because we're very close to the tar boundary here. There we go. We'll get a tiny curve. And then we'll let this hug the ridge as it flows back down this side of the mountain. So it's really kind of cool playing with much larger spaces like this when you have an ore quarry. And then that can go back in there. And then this can be upgraded into dirt as well. And then once we do have the road in, uh, of course, we can just uh, sort of push all this back away from the map boundary and uh, try and tidy up somewhat, at least a little bit. Then we can even discuss some rock detail in here as well. Perhaps some larger outcrops and even some sort of false cliff faces. So we're always welcome, right? We've done this sort of thing uh, before now, perhaps where we have sort of a boring stretch of a uh, regular gravel road. A few of these cliff face looking assets will uh, come into play and do a nice job for us. Perhaps mix and match them with some of the other sort of assets as well. Maybe some of the little rocky buttresses that can sit up top. Okay, consider the rotation of where these smaller rocks of these sit. And then we can do something much more interesting with the terrain and some of the larger rock assets that we rarely get to use because they're quite unique as to where they sit. Okay, but again, it's another spice sample for the episode, isn't it? Just mountain roads that have got industrial vehicles coming up and down to get to the various different little facilities and complexes that are part of this particular part of the town. Uh, this one is perfect, mine solutions. This one's absolutely great. These ones are a little bit underwhelming, but we could probably keep them. But nice, isn't it? You no, know, these ones are animated as well. In most cases, not all of them. But uh, it's an inclusion, isn't it? Again, you've got another sort of spy sample uh, beginning to develop here now. So yes, it's now just a case of uh, waiting for uh, 5.50 uh, workers this time to get to level 4. Which again, you know, just carry on doing some detailing now. You know, placing some rocks, wait for this to tick over. And of course, if you find it, it's just taking so long, then just go ahead and spam down some more extraction buildings to push you over the threshold. And then before you know it, you should be okay. And don't be afraid as well within these areas to include um, some of your more pollutive services. Perhaps a recycling centre will also work well in with the vibe of all the very heavy uh, looking industrial themed ore buildings. So, you know, if you want to, an excuse to squeeze in some of that pollutive uh, garbage collection, a recycling centre can also be welcome. Alongside some of your more industrial looking water assets as well, especially your sewage processing stuff, uh, exactly like we've got uh, just down here uh, in our little uh, live stream area that we did. You know, we provided a little bit of water treatment with some warehouses, just sort of general industrial themes. It doesn't all have to be ore just because it's an ore area. Things can be brought in to help sort of develop the, the vibe, right? Sort of theses and processes that we're all on board with. Okay, of course, ignore the temporary uh, minging power connection. We will eventually earthquake sense it all together once we know where everyone's going to sit. But either way, that's all I'm really after for a level 3 ore mine. I don't really want to use any of the other larger assets, uh, like the rotary kiln plant. Uh, it's just probably it's a little bit too big for me. It just dwarfs everything else around here. Um, even it's kind of a similar size to the steel plant, and that's really kind of the meat and potatoes for me today. I want this to draw the eye, so I'm going to avoid the rotary kiln. But you can put it in if you want. We definitely will get a fiberglass plant in. Cool. So, I'm just going to let things tick over. Right, carry on refining some ideas. And then, of course, we'll be back at level 4 in a hot minute once we hit 550 workers. So, we'll be right back. So, as we are slowly ticking up to level 4 here, and I'm just sort of analysing the build and you know seeing what I want to change and what needs to happen with it, there's an aesthetic that I'm quite keen to bring in. So we mentioned at the start of the episode that we would do some cargo lines over here eventually because it's a big, heavy industrialised area, of course. And I'm now thinking that these uh, worker barracks that are placed down, just despite the work account, I'm probably going to relocate these up to perhaps this patch over here. Just maybe a little sort of workers area over this side. So we'll do something with that in a second. But I'd like to have the aesthetic of the cargo line running parallel with the road in and out of the quarry. So let's have a little look at this. I'm going to do a nice healthy chunk of level terrain just to help carve out an initial gully for the train line to sit in. And we're just going to let this run all the way up here for the time being. What we will eventually do, and um, because we have a tiny bit of fertile land here, when we do uh, come to cover 
uh, the Noobs Guides farming build, uh, we can integrate the train line into the fields, which will be really, really cool. But that build doesn't exist yet, so we can't really do it, which is absolutely fine. So let's bring in a cargo train terminal here. All right. This is fine. We've used these before. Let's level out a little bit more terrain so we have a touch more breathing room. Then, of course, we'll re terraform to make it look more natural. Okay, fantastic. So let's bring in a new holding frame. And then we'll just grab this, move it forward ever so slightly. And then we can just have uh, the cargo line that uh, run parallel with the road into the industry area now. And this should give us a really cool aesthetic of, you know, trains coming in and out of the area alongside everything else. So quite cute design. I'm going to be happy with this for the most part, I think. So I'm just going to get this very crudely hooked into the rest of the city at the minute. Of course, as we come to build around the rail line, this will be amended to fit in with the theme. And I'm going to do some legal train work. Please just bear with me, all right? This is way too close, <laughs> but it's only temporary. Once we pop this tile, we will do a proper cargo train connection. But until then, we have to make do with uh, the limits of the uh, nine tile vanilla game. So just very crude, very simple uh, cargo train system. Uh, just to hook in so it's functional. And that should give us a connection for some uh, imports and exports in and out of the area, which of course is going to earn us more money and allow our industries to operate a little bit more efficiently. Let's go ahead and re-establish the road up the mountain. That's going to be fine for me. So there's a couple of things we could do with this here. Now, let's actually continue to eat away at this mountain ridge. Again, I want to maintain some natural shape in the mountain today. It's not just terraforming for the sake of terraforming. We're trying to keep the shape, but just make it look like it's, you know, it's been attacked by humanity. And that's kind of what all quarries are, right? You know, it's enormous scars in the landscape. They're not particularly uh, pleasant places to live. Well, not live, but work, you know what I mean. So let's bring in a connection here. I'm happy to have a single rail crossing. It shouldn't be uh, too much of an issue in this part. Again, like we did uh, over in our other industry areas builds, we know how to uh, use rail crossings now at this point in the series. Again, if you've not uh, seen our previous industries DLC builds, the forestry and the oil refinery, uh, please do jump into the playlist and go check them out. So I'd like to factor in the positioning of these warehouses. Yes, there we go. That's what we want, right? We can possibly do a medium if we have the space. Yes, we do. Fantastic. So again, it's only going to continually add uh, into the sort of heavy industrial vibes that we're generating within this part of town now. Uh, these can store, I guess, some commercial zone goods, and you might as well store some... Uh, unique factory products from the steel mill. Might as well, right? This is starting to generate some stuff now, so we can uh, store some things over here. And then we'll break that ever so slightly, and then just come back in uh, with no snapping at all. And just create our tiny little curve, and that's going to be fine. This can feed back in now. And then, of course, there's lots of detailing to be had around here too. Feel free to factor in some of the ore industry assets here once you get to level 4. You do get the big red sort of ore shed. Uh, this would also work really nicely alongside a cargo station. So it doesn't have to just be the generic storage warehouses. You can use the uh, industry specific storage here if you like from an aesthetic point of view. And also functional as well because you're right near uh, the industrial quarry. So it's up to you. It's a personal preference. But uh, I think I'm going to be happy with the integration of a cargo line that runs right into the industry area here. And of course uh, in and out into the rest of the city. So you can see we dropped down in workers now because I've deleted my workers barracks. So I'm just going to carry on uh, placing them back in and then of course spam down some resource buildings to pop us up to level 4. And then we'll be right back. And there we have a level 4 all mine where we get the car factory, which again isn't what we're going to use today. I will definitely drop in the maintenance building, fiberglass plant, industry storage and the all mine as well. And again we can just see some nice extraction spam in order to hit that level. So. It's a nice way of cheesing up to your industry level because otherwise you're going to have to have tons of extraction and processing buildings to hit the work account and that might not tie into your theme. You know, I'm trying to kind of scatter the facility across the mountain today. So it's a nice little way of cheesing it up, but you'll get there eventually anyway. Cool. So let's have a look at what we've unlocked. We do have some fun new buildings here as well. We have the uh, ore maintenance building, which is a really kind of big 
uh, important looking building. I think this will look quite nice uh, up and around the uh, train line over this side. So let's see again where we might be able to squeeze this in. Let's amend our road networks. Bring this one on a road length, just it was a slightly shorter. That will register its connection, and then it looks like we can possibly squeeze in the maintenance building alongside this area. Of course, we just want to paint out the all area a little bit more. And then let's grab that building. So this one's a super important looking one. It's got some nice vibes to it. Nice big sort of blocky building on it alongside. It's nice open courtyard vibes as well. So I think I'm happy for that to remain there. Of course, it's got lots of empty space around it, which I want detailing, uh, which we will do during our detail time lapse, of course. But that's going to give us an all maintenance building. That's going to be great. Again, we know how the maintenance buildings work now. They're just going to increase uh, the storage capacity of the industrial building by 5%. So just nice and easy stuff that we've all covered before. And then we have the fiberglass plant, which of course is going to give us glass uh, instead of the glass manufacturing plants over this side. So we can definitely get some of those in. And I think I'll probably switch out my small mine here for the large one. So let's amend some of our frames. And then let's go for this one right here. Yeah, it's just a large version, isn't it? And it's going to be slightly more important looking. This one's good for uh, tunneling to the side of hills because it's got the little sort of underground entrance on it. It's quite a nice one, that one. But I can just switch it out for my small, it's going to provide some extra workspaces. And of course, I produce more ore, which is going to help keep all of our processing buildings fed a lot more efficiently. And thus keep the uh, steel plant fed. And keep all the money and the cargo moving around, which is great. But really now, the meat and potatoes to me is waiting at 4, level 5, where we get the, uh, the big bucket excavator drills, the large ore mines here. Uh, because we want to do the final sort of facility within the complex. Uh, over this side and again i'm going to combine uh, the ore storage the big red shed thing and probably the fiberglass plant into this final little mini complex uh, within the larger ore quarry facility itself so again carry on detailing carry on playing with ideas and orientations of assets that you've unlocked and placed uh, i do have the capacity for a thousand workers in this ore mine now we need 800 but again i can kind of artificially spike it by spamming the extraction buildings down again which is probably what I'll do. So let's do that. Let's get to level five and then we can get that final facility made and then tidy up all the extraction spam and then get ready uh, to detail the thing up. So we'll see you at the final level. And fantastic, here we are at level five where we get the raw mineral storage, uh, which on a side note actually works very nicely next to a power plant if you're looking at a power plant build. A large, large ore mine and a shipyard, which of course we're not using the shipyard today. So again, we can see now we have more extraction spam and now we have hit level 5 and we have all available assets to us. Just go ahead and get rid of them all now, okay? Don't need these anymore. And we can sort out those areas uh, during our detail and time lapse as well. So, huge aesthetic uh, lover of the large ore mine. It's a very distinct asset, probably maybe the most distinct asset in the game. Be interested to hear your guys' opinion on that. I probably think it is, isn't it? So let's have a look at our ore pockets, come back into our resources uh, heat map and we can see that we can place it pretty much anywhere along this sort of banking, can't we? So let's do uh, some heavy terraforming here. I'm going to want a layer that's ever so slightly lower than this one here and we also just happen to have one on the other side uh, of this little road here. So this is going to be perfect for me. Of course, enormous ugly terraforming work will look awful before it begins to look good. So let's have a look at the uh, bucket excavators. We're going to go for probably two, I think. Yes, so we will have one here and then one here. So a very key aesthetic that I'm looking for here is to just see these things poking out behind the rocks, okay? Just to see them poking above. We can just about see them here as well, right? I might want to uh, chisel away a little bit of this ridge and we can do that just by uh, coming into our slope, grabbing that top layer, and then just sloping it out a touch. That should just expose a little bit more of them, all right, while still maintaining the natural shape of the mountain as well. So, that's not too bad. However, I do want these orientated uh, correctly. So, we know that the actual 
excavator itself sits at the opposite end of where the asset is placed. So we need to uh, factor that in. Let's go for a road that sits here. And then we can place one in this side. And then placing this orientation, it now looks as though this excavator is responsible for how cut away that this landmass is, all right? We can see that it's also slightly elevated up as well, so let's amend the bottom layer to now sit at that height. Okay, we'll have another one in there. I'm going to place another one in next to it. And again, with the spaces in between, um, if you would like to use the poor man's surface painter trick, this is a good opportunity to do it again. Uh, just some vanilla gravel path snapped into the grid. Uh, either side of these will just blend the textures together, helps them settle in uh, a little bit more. Okay. Cool. So let's have those right there. There was a pillage in the earth. And indeed, uh, your rocks decals will work uh, quite nicely at the, the foot of these as well. If you wanted to grab some larger rock formations and make it look as though they are actually, you know, ripping into the earth here and exposing stone and precious metals, etc. Then detailing vibes that can be brought in. Okay. Let's have a look at something else now. So, of course, we unlocked uh, the ore industry storage as well, which I'm quite keen to have over here. Mm, it does produce metal for us though, and we are do have two factories that are using a lot of metal. The, the steel plant and the refinery both require it, so we will leave it in. We'll, we'll, we'll see how we feel. Yeah, I just I can't get on board with the fiberglass plant for this build for some reason. <laughs> it's just you know an asset. It's just not sitting right. That's yeah. That's what I'm having with the fiberglass. Uh, the rotary kiln plant. Sorry, in this episode, it's just yeah, it's not resonating. Not resonating, and that's fine. You know, you don't have to use every asset within the pack. Uh, just ones that fit your theme and style. That's very much what you want to be doing. Cool. So we'll reamend that road network so the fence isn't sort of jerking up on top of it. That should be okay. Then I'll bring a little frame behind this, and then let's see where we can accommodate the fiberglass plant. So that we can maybe have one in there. I'm happy with that. So this one's got some really nice layers on it. Lots of interesting looking assets. Uh, there's something quite cool we can do with this one as well. So again, we're going to do a touch more terraforming. Uh, just to give ourselves that breathing room. So it's really fun kind of playing with these ore areas. Like larger sort of spaces. But treating it as sort of smaller micro centers across the mountain. Rather than filling the entire space. And trying to mine every single ore pocket that you possibly can. You know, sometimes less is more. And uh, I hope that sort of comes across in today's build anyway. Right here, that should give us enough room. There we go. So if we just back these fiberglass plants onto each other, and um, we can get some very nicely repeated shapes and um, within them. Okay, kind of like almost doubles up the asset. Like it's now one larger building as opposed to just one regular thin one. Of course, different orientations side by side as well, sort of front to front, with a road in between will also work. And as with and all other assets as well, you know, it's not just those that it works with the the rotary kilns, the ones that we're trying to avoid today, uh, actually do work very nicely when they're stacked together. Uh, for those that followed uh, season one of my uh, 5B ventures will know what I'm talking about. Okay, but I think that's okay for just the secondary, or well, the third sort of extraction complex within the quarry itself. So we've got these little spots just established over the mountain, which is holding all the resource. And it's all now feeding into central processing areas with the fiberglass plants and the ore grinding mills. Uh, things are being exported now. We're starting to get uh, some stock of metals beginning to accumulate within these warehouses. And we can see the aesthetic that having cargo alongside a rail line has, right? Very similar to what we did uh, with our overgrown detailing uh, over this side, you know? It all comes together, doesn't it? It all works very nicely. Super happy with it. However, guys, that does feel like a good place for a detailing time lapse. We have a lot of work to do today in order to get this to settle in. And um, because they're such unique builds, they're very hard to blend into the natural landscape. So uh, a little bit of suburban decoration, including light pathways that we brought through here just to increase the walkability. Uh, the path over to the train station is getting a nice little bit of use now as well. It's nice to see this part of town getting a little bit busier, of course. Uh, a ton of rock detailing all over the mountain creates some more of these sort of rocky outcrops and cliff faces and um, all against the roads with lots of overgrowth, lots of forest uh, that hasn't been touched by the sort of, you know, dirty, pollutive industries here yet. 
and then tidy up any inconsistencies around here. Lots more decals around them. Uh, lots of bushes, overgrowth, etc. Uh, reconfigure our workers' barracks here just so they were a little more symmetrical. Again, they were kind of spammed uh, just so we could hit the work accounts. Uh, carry on with lots of sort of tufty overgrowth and broken nature reserve fencing uh, where we can squeeze it in. Uh, just so it kind of, you know, makes us look as though nature is trying to reclaim uh, what has been ripped out by, by man. Right. And then some fencing alongside the rail line here and then decorate up these spaces. And again, not forgetting that we do have a vanilla or area over this way. So we can detail with some generic uh, industry placements as and when we need them. And then just generally tidy up the terraforming so it doesn't look quite so obviously terraformed by the player. And looks a little bit more, I guess natural isn't the word, but organic to an ore mine. So it settles into the natural shape of the mountain and more terraforming work just to help it all settle in. But uh, even the view to the downtown now from the sort of the first ore processing area. is uh, It's nice and stark, isn't it? You know, you've got sort of like very dirty, pollutive, nasty, destructive industry. Sort of, you know, that's feeding the luxury lifestyle in downtown New Bjork. Right? <laughs> if you want a little bit of lore, then there you go. Cool. So, let's detail uh, the Muddy Da Vinci or Mines, and then we'll be right back. So we have decorated our roundabout with some rock and roadie patterns just to try and tie into the whole sort of ore mine quarry area, which I quite like this design, it's quite cute. And lots of overgrowth and fencing um, all over the place, of course, with this build, as we mentioned, alongside bringing in some further office zone-ins and overgrowth patterns around our industry buildings. 
Around the sunken ore pit, we've introduced a lot of overgrown areas just kind of where it hasn't been touched. And just this little recess into the land now makes it so much more interesting, doesn't it? Just having that little drop in layer. And of course, the uh, vibes provided by the American uh, two lane truss bridge really help tie it all together as well. Further, we just have some simple path and overgrowth detailing nearby to the workers' barracks alongside some fire safety towers as well. And what I've tried to do here is to respect uh, the ridges of the mountains, leaving them very heavily forested. As though this is what it once was, and now everything that's been cut away by uh, the new Biokas has obviously left it quite scarred and ugly from you know, what it used to look like, sort of along the backside, or very natural and overgrown. Uh, further, sort of placements and fencing and overgrowths around these sides as well, just to help everything uh, settle into the area a little bit more. And the kind of teeth excavator drills have really sort of added in something into the skyline, haven't they? It's turned out really nicely, uh, the addition of those two. And then the uh, refinery point on top has just been zoned up with some more uh, generic industry. It did just create a very small hole uh, within the district here just to get regular generic industry back in. Uh, just because I didn't want everything to be kind of all themed. You know, a little bit of storage is uh, more than welcome. And then it also zoned in some more fencing with some zoned industry next to the rail line and extended it past the dead end of the cargo station. Almost as it's just some sort of runoff area perhaps or some extra loading space for the cargo station if needed again with some fencing and overgrowth around it and i'm really happy with this build in terms of the blend of how nature has sat with industry it's almost like they've almost tried to respect it in a way by not ripping it all out there are still uh, some bits and pieces left to sort of maintain their natural place and then if we have a look at the uh, sunset view here uh, this is one of the best views in the city now as we and kind I've of get the silhouette of the mountain and the forest uh, in and amongst all the heavy industry. And it's turned out really nicely, hasn't it? Uh, very strong sunset vibes here. However, guys, that is going to do it for today's uh, Ore Town and Ore Quarry. I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, likes, comments and shares below. Really help me out. Equally as much if you haven't enjoyed it, then leave me a dislike as well. Uh, if you'd like to help support the channel, the link down to Instant Gaming, Patreon and Merchandise below. And a quick thank you this week um, is actually today, the 27th of me recording this video. And that we hit 50,000 subscribers on the channel, which is absolutely amazing. So thank you so much for all support. 50,000 is nuts. <laughs> I don't know how 50,000 of you thought that this content was um, acceptable enough to subscribe to, but I'm really glad you enjoy it. And you all get so much joy. And uh, you know, everyone has their own favorite city, I think, and that's one of my favorite things about the community. So thank you for all the support. Love you all. Um, there will be a 50,000 subscriber special video going out, which keep an eye on the channel for that. Make sure you've got notifications turned on if you are subscribed. And if you're not subscribed, consider joining the 50k. You know, we're all enjoying some nice, simple, cute vanilla uh, City Skylines detail in here. And of course, we have Ilos as well, which is the modded beast. But otherwise, please do hang around for some cinematics of the new ore area. But I will shut up and I will leave it there. Thanks, thank you all so much for watching. And as always, enjoy the rest of your day.